Well, in a little bit, uh, Mr. Harrington, he's going to come up and read the scripture for us after we're done here. And he's going to tell us uh, about a rock, a stone. And the rock had a name to it. Jim? Not Jim, no, the rock wasn't Jim. <laughs> and uh, he's going to tell us about this rock that uh, Samuel set up. And so you'll be listening for this special name, Ebenezer. That was the name of the rock. What's that? Yeah, I got it over there. I need some help. It's pretty heavy, so I'm going to need some helpers, some strong young people like you to lift it. Well, you'd be surprised. And so this uh, rock, Samuel and his people, they were in big trouble. They had some uh, enemies that were going to come and wipe them off the face of the map. And uh, they went and worshipped. And there were some things that took place before that. Uh, God told the people to... Uh, Turn to me. Put away your foreign gods and all this other stuff and just serve me and me alone. And that's what they did. And then uh, they went to church and they worshiped God with their whole hearts. And God thundered, it said. And the Philistines, they took off running, their enemies. And they chased them down and they uh, cleared the land of their enemies. And Samuel... He set up a rock. Did you see my rock back there? Who, who's pretty strong? You're pretty, all right, we'll send you two over there. Send the two war girls. Can you over get my rock? It's pretty heavy. Even, Elena, it might take three of you. Go ahead, Billy. Right over there, it might take three of you to lift it over here. It's pretty heavy. Yeah, bring it on over here. It's just a box. No, that's a rock. Put it right here. Is it heavy? No. Uh, you're probably tough, probably, huh? Well, we'll put it up here so the boys can't see behind it. There, how about that? And this rock that they lifted up is probably some sharp, piney rocks, according to the name of the area that they were in. And so maybe it looked something like that. Maybe he did it by himself. Maybe he got some helpers. And then he called the rock this. Ebenezer. You ever wondered what that word means? I bet your moms and dads have wondered. Anybody ever wondered what that means? Yeah, there you go. We just got done singing that song, Here I Raise My Ebenezer, Hither to uh, By My Help or something. Ebenezer. It was the name of the rock. It meant help monument. You ever seen a monument? Well, that's what he named it, Ebenezer. Yeah, someone, someone saved him. God saved him, and Samuel said, you know, we've got to remember this. And so he set up this rock, and he said, this is called Ebenezer. Named it Ebenezer. Anybody ever name a rock? Name your cats or dogs? Yeah. But Samuel, that day meant so much to him and to the people. Every time they saw the rock, hey, that's Ebenezer. God has helped us, and he will continue to help us. So when you think of today's passage, think of this rock, this stone. Ebenezer means God has helped us. How old are you kids? Seven. Seven, eight, five, six, nine, four, three, two. I was close. Okay. So you've been on this earth for a few years, and God has helped you so far. Keep placing your trust in him and anticipate that he'll continue to help you. Your moms and dads, too, he's helped them so far. And based on what he's done in the past, we can anticipate that he'll continue to help us. And you know how he helped us the best? He died on the cross for us. So we can look at the cross and say, yep, Jesus helped us. And we can anticipate that he'll continue to do that. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. And we thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts here today through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So before you go back, my friend Riley's going to be my helper today. Where did Riley go? There she is right there. Everybody see Riley back there? She's my helper today. And so uh, they're missing a cleaning person. Their other cleaning person moved to Fargo. And so now they don't have a cleaning person at the church here. 
So after you, after you, yes, you can help me clean. After you eat your candy, see Riley back there? She's got something in her hands. Can you put your uh, wrappers in the garbage can? And you have my permission to do that after church and uh, check with your moms and dads too, okay? So let's try and help that, that with the wrappers, okay? Thank you. I hope there's something in there. And then you can go sit down with your moms and dads. All right, thank you. Where he came from, uh, he left the splendor of heaven to came down to earth to save us. And so I'd like to sing this one for you here today. He left the splendor of heaven Knowing his destiny Was the lonely hill of Golgotha There to lay down his life for me If that isn't love The ocean is dry There's no stars in the sky And a sparrow Whenever you sing, uh, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, and you come across the word Ebenezer, guess what's the first thing that pops into my mind? Ebenezer Scrooge. Yep. So I was always wondering, what does Ebenezer mean? So we're going to look a little bit that, at that today. When I was uh, working on uh, this message here from our uh, First Samuel chapter 7, seeing what uh, Samuel did with that uh, stone, it reminds me of a time a few years ago, we had a 2001 Ford Taurus, and the kids named it the Turtle. And we were coming back from, a, I think it was conference, I think, down in, at the Ark in Wisconsin. And we got back, and we had a little trouble in Fargo, and I was having a little trouble with it before, and made it to Fargo, and, and we got uh, west of Jamestown, about a mile away from mile marker 233, in the car decided it was time to be done. And I was able to sneak it up another mile to exit 233, mile marker 233, and uh, there it was finally done. And so between uh, Jamestown and Steele, there we sat and called the uh, wrecking company out of Steele, North Dakota, and he came to rescue us. We needed help, and he came there with his uh, tow truck and 
and uh, said goodbye to the turtle. And we waited for three and a half hours. My wife was up in Park River, and she came with uh, my mother-in-law's van to pick us up and take us back to Golden Valley. And so today, when we go west on 994, and we see mile marker 233, or I think maybe it's exit 233, and I say, hey kids, there's 233, that's where the turtle bit the dust. And they usually, ah, whatever. Or maybe they think of it, I don't know, maybe they're sleeping, I don't know, whatever happens. But that place is a place to us where we needed help. 233. So next time you go west on 994 and you see 30, 233, you'll say, hey, I remember that. That's where Pastor Tom needed help. And he probably still, still needs help, anyhow. So when I was thinking about that, maybe there's something in your life, there's different things in your life, where you can remember, you see something, or you encounter something, a place in the past, where that's where I needed help, and help came for me. Okay. In our passage for today, the first thing that we're going to look at today is Samuel's statement. Samuel's statement. So if you take your Bibles and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 7, we notice here in 1 Samuel chapter 6 and 7, the Ark of the, Ark of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant, has been captured and it's been out of place for a little while. A long while, probably should say. And it almost got back into the house of the Lord. It almost made it back to church, but not quite. It went across the street to the house of Abinadab. And there it was for 20 years. And you notice in verse, 20, 20, or verse 2, 20 years the people were lamenting after the Lord. And so I thought about that, 20 years of lamenting, because the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God was on the other side of the street, so to speak. Sometimes, you know, God, he, He's not in a, as much of a hurry as we are sometimes. And the Holy Spirit had been stirring in their hearts because the people were trying to worship multiple gods. They were trying to worship a little bit of God here, the Lord God here, a uh, little bit of the Him, a little bit of this, the Baals, the Ashtra, these other things. And for 20 years they were back and forth, and now they're lamenting, and God's been stirring in their hearts, working in their hearts, getting them ready to receive this statement. And you see it there in verse 3. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the, to the Lord with all your heart, remove the foreign gods and the Ashtra from among you, and direct your hearts to the Lord, and serve Him alone, and He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. Okay? If you're wondering what Ashtra was, that was kind of like their sex gods. And uh, the Baals are these false gods, and so this is what they were worshiping, God's people. And notice the order here in verse 3. The first thing he says, if you return to the Lord with all your heart. Okay? Priority number one. And Jesus is looking for the same thing or from you, from me. Return with all all of your heart. Not, not, don't give me uh, you know, 40% to me and uh, another 20% to the Baals and another 20 or that'd be another 60, another 40 and another 40% to the Astra or whatever. You know, they're probably giving the Lord maybe 2 or 3% and the rest to the other. 100%. The Lord was calling for 100% of their heart not bits and pieces of it. And he's looking for the same thing from you, all of your heart. So return to me with all of your heart, remove the foreign gods, the ashtra, da, 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 and then direct your hearts to the Lord, okay? And serve him alone, and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines, okay? It wouldn't do any good to tell the people, get rid of your uh, ashtra, your bales, get rid of your false gods, okay? And you've heard me say this before, a false god or an idol is anything that we fear, love, or trust more than Jesus, okay? So the people had that. And so if Samuel would have just said, hey, get rid of those foreign gods, what for? We like them. They had to have a heart change first, okay? Needed to change that heart first. A new heart, a heart of faith, okay? So notice that order, heart. Then start getting rid of this other stuff. And then... He said, then serve me with your whole hearts. Serve him alone. Direct your hearts to him. And so for you today as well, you could put your name in there in verse 3. Then Samuel spoke to Tom. 
Samuel spoke to the House of Hope, AFLC, or whoever you might be as you're listening on uh, internet or whatever. So notice that order that you see in there. Notice also that the promise has been made to the Hebrew people. Okay? God has made a promise through his word to the people of the people of God, the Israelites, the Hebrews. Okay? So what we want to catch out of there is God's faithfulness to his word. Okay? He said, if you return to the Lord with all your heart, remove the foreign gods and the Ashtra from among you, and direct your hearts to the Lord and serve him alone, he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. Okay? Keep that in mind as you scoot a little further on here. Notice what the uh, sons of Israel did. They re removed the Baals and the Ashtra and threw them in the, the uh, dumpster and the trash truck came and picked them up and hauled them away because they were serving the Lord alone. They had one God, the true and living God. Okay? And they served him alone. Then uh, Samuel, he gathered them all up, and I'm going to pray for you. Pray to the Lord for you, okay? So that's what they did. Notice in verse 6, they gathered at Mizpah, and Mizpah means watchtower, okay, which will come in handy to know as you scoot a little further into the passage here. So there at Mizpah, the people, they all gathered up, and they went and got a, a pitcher of water, and guess what they did with it? They poured it out. They emptied it out. What for? Well, it's a picture of what's taking place on the inside of them. They're pouring out their sins. You know, we were worshiping Baals, Ashtra. We're just pouring it all out. We're emptying ourselves. We have nothing to bring to you, Lord. We need help. Okay? We can do the same thing. Just pour it out to the Lord. Lord, I've, I've sinned against you, da, 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 poured out. That's a picture of what was happening on the inside of them, okay? So the Philistines, you'll notice what they did. So the people of Israel, they're all gathered up there, and to uh, phrase it a little uh, further into what we would recognize here in 2022, they went to, to uh, worship the Lord at an altar, and they sacrificed a burnt offering, uh, to jump ahead a little bit here, they went to church to worship Jesus. Okay. And there they were, uh, they were in repentance. They were returning to him with all of their heart. They were throwing away their false gods, things that they had placed ahead of uh, the Lord God. And they were serving him wholeheartedly, and they were offering these burnt sacrifices. And the Philistines said, Let's go get those wimps. Comes t time to battle, and they go to church. Those weaklings, those strange people that they go and worship. Now is the time to strike them down and kill them all. Bad idea. Because as you look through the passage here, as Samuel then offers this uh, young suckling lamb. The whole burnt offering, this little lamb, little newborn lamb, young suckling lamb. He's worshiping the Lord there, and the people are serving him with their whole heart. They, they responded to his word. God told them, if you do this, and they worshiped him with their whole heart. They're, they're worshiping him with their whole heart. And the Philistines said, now is our chance to go kill them all. And God said, I don't think so. And he thundered with a great thunder, and the Philistines took off running. They went into confusion, and God's people went into confidence. Okay. Now that promise was made to the Hebrew people. Okay. The principle that we can catch out of there is that God is faithful to his word. And to be like the Israelite people and respond in the same way and have confidence. I know that God can do that for me as I come and worship. Okay? He doesn't have to. You know? There's no guarantee that someone will come in here and kill us all. Enemies will wipe us off the map. That happens around the world. But even if it does happen, I'm still coming and worshiping. Because my God is faithful to his word. He will deliver me. He will save me in the end. So 
You catch that in there as well. For the people of Hebrew, the Hebrews here in this passage, he protected them. He was faithful to his word. See? You see, the unbelieving world thinks it's silly. The unbelieving world thinks it's absolutely foolish for you to come here today and worship Jesus. But we know better. We know differently. The scripture tells us differently. See? They find that silly, but not God. He's watching over that as you come and worship him. Because that's where you're going to get your strength. They were poured out, yet God protected them. He's faithful to his word. So catch that when you see that as well. Notice also the suckling lamb that uh, Samuel offered. This little lamb, little itty bitty lamb, that Samuel took up to the altar and burnt the whole works. It is a little picture of the new life that had been kindled, new life that has been birthed in the, into them. There's uh, returning to the Lord and committing their whole heart to Him. This new life, it's a picture of new life that's occurring there in God's people. See? This little lamb, too, it is also a picture of the Lamb of God. Hidden in there is a picture of Jesus as well. Okay? So, we see that's what Samuel is doing, and the Philistines, they took off running. Notice in verse 11, the men of Israel went out of Mizpah, remember that means watchtower, God is watching over them, and pursued the Philistines and struck them down as far as Bethkar. Bethkar means house of lamb, or the, the house of the lamb. And so from Mizpah all the way to Bethkar, the house of the lamb, and the Philistines were over there, and God drew a line in the sand. Don't you Philistines dare cross that line. And they didn't for a long time. And the people of God were safe behind that line of the house of the Lamb. Okay? You are safe in the house of the Lamb. On that line, the enemies can't get to you because the victory has been made through Jesus, okay? our Lamb of God. So you catch that in there as well. So the Philistines were on the run. They're uh, past the house of Beth, Beth Car, there, the house of the Lamb, and God has saved them. He's delivered them. He's brought about salvation to them. And that would bring us to our second thought here, uh, Samuel's stone. So we noticed, I skipped one, didn't I? Samuel's statement, Samuel's sacrifice. Now the third thing, Samuel's stone, okay? So Samuel, as they take off running, they went to the, as far as the house of uh, the lamb, Beth Carr there, and somewhere on the way back, they stop at this place called Shen, or Shen, or however they say that. That means a uh, rocky place, rocky cliffs. It could be a town that uh, is near these rocky cliffs, or maybe in the rocky cliffs, or whatever, whatever it might be. It might just be a certain area. There's cliffs there, there's rocks, and so on and so forth. And so Samuel took one of these rocks. And whether he did it all by himself, he must have, let's say he did it by himself. And he took all of his strength and set up this rock, a little Ebenezer rock there. And uh, maybe he got a couple of uh, high school football players. I need some help, fellas. And they picked up a great big rock, and they set it up. And then Samuel said, I'm going to name it Ebenezer. Why? Because this place is the place where God has helped us. Thus far has God helped us. That's what Ebenezer means. Okay? So as the people of Israel, they were worshiping, they were in big trouble before God thundered, and the Philistines took off running. And they took off running, and Israel routed them, and they said, uh, don't come past this line again. And Samuel said, you know, God has helped us. We, we were all dead people. The Philistines were coming to wipe us out, but God helped us, and we're still alive. We've been delivered from our enemies. Victory. Okay. So that's why Samuel set up this rock, okay? this monument, uh, a help monument. Okay. So, Every time the people went back and forth, 
they crossed this place called Shen, and they would point to the rock. Hey, that's where God helped us. Okay? It carries the idea that God has helped us, and we anticipate he will continue to do that. We know that he's been faithful to his word in the past. Currently, as we lift up the rock and we call it Ebenezer, and we anticipate that he will continue to do so, take care of us. He has been our helper. How about in your life? Maybe there's different times in your life. I'm 50, and some of you are older than me, some of you are younger than me. And there's... I could say, today, thus far God has helped me. Whatever age you are, God has helped me thus far. I know he has. And for as long as you live, God will help you. How do I know that? What, what, uh, What do you go back to and you look at it and say, God helped me on such and such a date? Maybe you have a diary. You make little notes. Maybe you have something on your wall. Maybe you have a a certain location, a certain place, a certain event. God helped me here. And he is still doing it. So I was thinking about that, trying to make the connection to our Ebenezer uh, today. There was another rock where God helped us, called Calvary. And there at Calvary, something else was raised up, a cross, with Jesus on it. He went there to die for me, to die for you. And he has helped us there at the cross. And whenever I look at the cross, I can keep looking way into the future. All of my life, he will help me. Here I raise my Ebenezer, where God has helped me. And that's the, kind of the idea behind this Ebenezer. God has helped us. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word that you've given to us today. Thank you for uh, your word. you gave you your word to the Hebrew people here, the Israelites. They heard that word and they responded. It might have been a 20-year process if you would have said that those same words 19 years ago, they might not have responded. But today, in this 20th year, they responded to that word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit stirring in their hearts to return and to commit themselves wholeheartedly to you throw away their false gods, and you would deliver them. So we thank you, Lord, for that, that wonderful promise. So stir in our hearts too, Lord. Thank you for Samuel and this lifting up of this stone named Ebenezer. Thus far, God has helped us. Lord, do the same for us as well. Help us. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, giving us victory over our enemies, the world, the devil, and our own flesh. Sin and death, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, amen.